Welcome to Success Story. I'm your host, Scott Clary. The Success Story podcast is part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. HubSpot has been a huge supporter of the show. They have so many tools that can help your business. The one that I want to just mention today, so you go check it out, is their new AI chatbot. It's called Campaign Assistant. And it's a totally free to use AI tool made for marketers and business leaders who spend hours a day on content creation. Campaign Assistant will transform the way you build marketing campaigns at scale. Craft personalized emails, ads, and landing pages in a matter of minutes. Just pick the content type, add key selling points, and let AI take it from there. It works seamlessly with all of HubSpot's marketing and sales tools to scale your output across email, social, and more. So AI your way to your most effective campaigns yet at hubspot.com slash campaign dash assistant. So my grandmother raised me. She was a Holocaust survivor and on her deathbed, right um, at the time that I had my first child, she looked me in my eyes and she said, I got it all wrong. I wanna apologize to you. I know that your whole life I was raising you to live for your family, to do everything just for your kids, not to think about yourself, not to really take care of yourself because I taught you that being a good woman and a good mom is just taking care of others. I was wrong. I'm sorry. And um, I don't want you to live like me. I don't want you to live a life of regret. I want you to live a life of happiness. And that literally put me in a interesting position because I, my grandmother influenced pretty much everything that I've done until that point in my life. And it made me open up my eyes and ask myself, I love my child more than anything in this world. Why don't I feel that way about myself? I constantly please people and partners and do backflips to raise money and everything else. When does the happiness come in? Because I make money. Theoretically, I'm wealthy, I'm successful, I'm married, I have a healthy child, I'm living the dream. Why aren't I happy? And this set me up in um, in a really interesting way because it made me open up my eyes. I had to get real with myself. I had to understand what I was running from and why I was chasing money so hard. Why was your grandma not happy? She dedicated her life to living with a man that she didn't like. She was afraid to leave. She was living in an abusive relationship. Mental health was not something that was uh, spoken of back in those days. And uh, she always lived with a fear that somehow, that somehow, you know, she would have no value to society unless she would be a good cook or cleaner. And she had to be the best mom because that's all that she had. But she had so much inside of her that she never expressed because she didn't have the courage. And even, even in your life up to that point, you were never the, the stereotypical housewife, quote yeah. unquote, you're still building things. You're still very successful family business by any measure, any standard, someone looking at you would be like, she's, she's killing it. So did you, how did you identify what that thing was where you weren't happy? Because I think a lot of people would be very confused by that because um, you weren't your grandma. Right. I wasn't, but, uh, I wasn't living in integrity with myself. So yes, I was making money and doing all that, but uh, I didn't have genuine friendships that I really wanted. I wasn't really in a healthy personal relationship. So from the outside, my life looked amazing. And I felt tremendous guilt for not being the traditional housewife because that's how I was raised. But um, inside, I knew that uh, the building blocks that I built for success were not it that there was something else and it was a lot deeper and I needed to see what was it? What did I need? Because theoretically I had the things that I was chasing my whole life. And what it was is being enough. I had to figure out how to be enough being myself and how to stop being a people pleaser and how to stop saving everyone and how to stop being a pushover and how to turn myself into a real leader so I can lead myself, so I could lead my personal and professional life and get to a space where I could look at myself in the mirror and say, I'm happy. And when you look at the the before and after of that point, you you were by most people's degree or, or measure successful before and successful after. So how do you how do you actually measure 
success before and after that point? I won't work with people just because there's a money a number yeah. attached to it anymore. I won't uh, sell my soul anymore to projects or uh, relationships that are out of integrity and that are not in alignment with my values. I will not smile and feel resentful and be passive aggressive. I learn how to communicate. I learned how to be the person that I always dreamed I could have as a friend. Mm -hmm. I had to become her first. Do you think that a lot of people, it's an interesting conversation because I think a lot of entrepreneurs um, have a lot of issues that they don't discuss. And now I've never been a, a, a woman, female entrepreneur, which obviously ha has a whole other set of things that you're thinking through. But I think a lot of people maybe just focus on the metrics that everybody says they should focus on. And they don't focus on any of those thoughts that you had at that point. And when they do achieve measure of success, whatever that is, I think it's very hard for people to unwind their life and to basically build it up from scratch. I think that's scary as hell. Like that's super, super scary. So in your life, maybe give some context as to what had led you to success before this point. And then also what did building your life back up, breaking it down, building it back up look like, and what were some of the things that you had to do and why did you have to do them? Cause I know with your husband, I know there was some items there that were like not in line with who you were. And, and I think that story is really important and impactful because again, a lot of men have issues and they don't talk about them. I'm sure a lot of women feel stuck in a lot of situations that I think maybe a little bit of your experience would help them understand how to navigate. If you ask most women, uh, what does happiness mean to them? They will say freedom. And everyone, what is freedom? everyone wants that too. Right. What does freedom mean to a woman? It means I can be myself, um, messy, uh, broken in some parts and still be loved. I don't have to constantly uh, think about being young and trying to belong. And a lot of women don't want to think about these things. So they get very busy, especially in their careers. And uh, they get very busy uh, with things that don't really matter because they don't want to face the fact that I'm a woman. I'm not going to have the same opportunities as the guy sitting next to me, no matter how hard I try. We just live in that world. So instead of complaining about it, you have to build your own opportunities. Um, if you want to have authentic, genuine friendships, you have to become that person first. That's a really difficult thing to do, especially if you're successful. You have people maybe on your team that, that are yes people. And you have people in your life that are yes people because you do things for them. You do favors for them. And as women... Uh, not too long ago, we weren't providers. Our job was nurturers. So we lived in a society where our job was to have babies and to nurture babies in communities. And if a woman wouldn't, God forbid, not want to have a child back only 70, 80 years ago, we're not speaking about a thousand years ago, mm -hmm. there's no place for her. It was like she was damaged goods. So women, I think... Uh, a lot of us have conditioned ourselves is we could do it all. I don't need anything. I don't need anyone. I'm strong. But the female empowerment, I think, is really messed up because what a lot of women don't realize is you did not invent the girl power, the girl boss that you are, that a lot of us would say, yes, I'm all for, for that. That was invented by the government to take the mother outside of the home. And not to get too political, most women don't understand that uh, a lot of the issues that, that we go through with female empowerment are not real. These are manufactured things. So, for example, do I know that if I want to get on the same stage as a man with the same qualifications as me, that he's going to be offered about a contract? Yes, I know that. I'm not going to cry about it any longer. I'm going to negotiate better terms for myself or I will be in integrity and say no. What a lot of us do is want to cry about things and want to complain about things. And we don't want to take action. We just want to be in a bubble of complaining and of whining men and women, but especially women who really love to do this in packs and they love to have girl dinners for conversation of how bad the world is, how unfair things are. And for me personally, I don't waste my energy any longer on any of those things. Life is really, really short. And to answer your previous question, how did I 
do it, right? Because theoretically, if you're successful, how do you kind of break things down? And but, but also, I want you to mm -hmm. I want you to tell the story of what you built with your husband too, because that sure. frames it as well. Sure. So I dropped out of college yeah. to work on Wall Street because one of my friends was a call caller, and he told me that they print money here. And you don't need to, because as a teenager, I worked in McDonald's, I worked in clothing stores, I had odd jobs, I always worked. That's just how my family was. We all worked and we helped out. And uh, he was like, you have to come here. You know, you like to speak. Maybe you could do this on the phone. It's a lot of fun. So I tried it and I thought it was the greatest thing ever. I'm like, why doesn't everybody work as a cold caller? This is so much fun. And uh, it was not an easy job, but it definitely gave me the foundation of, uh, of a lot of things, right? Because nothing will prep you for the real world is being hung up on when you're you know, doing cold calling for a living. I was the only woman on the floor that wasn't a secretary. I eventually got licensed and uh, it was really, really great foundation for me. And then I was bit by the entrepreneurial bug because we were pitching penny stocks and a lot of different things back then. And I was like, how do these companies do it? They just kind of raise money and they have these ideas. I have a lot of ideas. Maybe I could do it. It was Ignorance is bliss because I had no idea what anything was. It didn't come from that world. My parents were regular blue collar workers. I was told that I have no business even doing this. Like, who am I to even talk to these people? Like, my mom would be like, do these people know that, like, you're nothing? I'd be like, well, I'm not nothing. And she would be like, no, like, you're nothing compared to them. I'm like, yeah, I think they know. But I'm still, I'm still going to be brave and try because, it, because, because I actually think I could help them. I was just crazy enough to try things. What you need to be. <laughs> yeah. And again, you have to be ignorant. You can't be too bright and educated on a lot of topics because then then you have analysis paralysis, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to build. I met my husband. He was in the same mindset. And we built companies. We built uh, two recycling companies. One company, we um, got an idea from... Uh, a magazine ad in an Italian uh, magazine where a company was recycling used cooking oil into biodiesel. I'm like, oh my God, this would be so much fun. And he would be like, you think we could like do this? Cause no one does it here. We researched it. And I'm like, yeah, why not? Let's just try it. And, you know, I went to my investor pool that, uh, that I built throughout the years and pitched them this idea. And they all look at me and they were like, you're crazy, right? Like, what are you talking about? Why do you want to take this dirty oil that's garbage? And like, you have no experience doing this. You don't even know what equipment you're going to need. I'm like, I know, but wouldn't it be like wonderful if we didn't rely on traditional, you know, gasoline? And and it was just honestly a shit show because we had no idea what we were doing. And in 17 months, we built a seven-figure company and one of our huge competitors that was in the sanitation space because that's who occupied that space. Uh, one could have said they were maybe a mafia guy, you know, that threatened to break our legs, maybe. And uh, he just got sick and tired of us taking his customers. So he bought us. And awesome. it was it was amazing. <laughs> it was just like you saw at The Sopranos, like, let's just make a deal. And I was yeah. like, yeah, let's make it. And they're like, sweetheart, can you go bring us some coffee so we can make the deal with the owner of the company? I'm like, I am the owner of the company, not just my husband. And he was like, I'm sorry, we don't have conversations about money with women. Wow. What year was that? It, it, was, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. It You're was, not it, that old. <laughs> yes, it, it, it was 2007. It wasn't that. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't 100 years ago. Uh. That, was a that must really, have pissed you off. Honestly, no. I no. was really used to that. And it always motivated me when somebody would be like, fetch me some cookies. Or, you know, you shouldn't be even, you know, in this room. That always motivated me to kind of work harder. So people would take me more serious. I know a lot of women don't have that mindset. They're like, how dare he? Or how would they? Or that would piss you off. No, I actually felt really grateful to be in these rooms because I was raised that I don't belong there, that I'm nothing. So I felt that at least, at least I could be a fly in the wall and learn things. And eventually these people will and did realize my value. So I was very humble by how I was raised and it was actually really helpful to me versus a lot of people who are raised in really, you know, 
loving homes and they understand money and they understand all these things, they get really hurt because they're like, well, I'm a college graduate or I'm this, like, how dare you speak to me and I'm going to sue you. I wasn't of that mindset at all. I was of the mindset like, I'm glad to be here and I'll prove myself mm -hmm. and I'll work as hard as I have to to prove myself. And um, that was our first company. The second company was uh, in the similar space. It was also a recycling company, but we recycled used clothing into insulation. We sold it as feedstock and uh, we had more experience in the space. We had a little bit more connections. The only reason why we didn't stay in that industry is because New York City actually got into the same business. They started collecting used clothing at that time and you don't compete with the government and one of our biggest buyers actually bought us out. Uh, very similar, you know, they saw what we were doing. They saw our systems. They actually wanted us to stay and manage some parts of the business. So it was really great and um, really, really good experiences. I could tell you a lot of the bad things that happened, but the reason why I want to share the good stuff is because a lot of times when we think about things that happened to us or for us in the past, we only remember the bad stuff. You know, mm -hmm. these people screwed us or this guy said this to me and we get triggered by that, right? I learned to, and I teach my kids this, you have to learn to remember the good things because you will be calm and you will be more stable and you can't build anything on shaky ground. And the ground is you, you're the soil. Anything that you want to build starts with you, right? Because the idea comes to you for a reason. And I believe that if you can sustain yourself and calm yourself down and not get triggered or influenced by negativity, your journey will be a lot smoother and a lot happier because most of it is in our heads. Mm -hmm. What do these people mean? Why don't they like me? Why don't they want me? Is it because I'm this, I'm not good enough? And you get into this cycle where you're theoretically abusing yourself because you're allowing this. If somebody would speak to your child that way, you would never allow that. But what about you yourself? There's a child living inside of you and you're constantly throwing rocks at that child. And I think it's important for people to know that failing is inevitable, right? We failed a lot when we were raising money. We got thrown out of investor meetings. Like, I'm just giving you the good parts because that's what I choose to focus on. And um, something happened for me to choose to rebuild my life in addition to my conversation with my grandmother is... I went probably years without sleeping, without uh, resting, really. I would work 60, 70 hour weeks. I wouldn't sleep. I would have chronic migraines. My nose would bleed all the time. And everyone that I knew was suffering from one or some of the these same conditions. And yeah, they would be like- Entrepreneurs building, yeah. yeah. And they would just say, it's normal. This is why high performers do. Uh, this is what separates the weaklings from people that are strong and successful. And this is how you function. So I learned to function through pain, through insomnia, through heart palpitations. I just felt that that's what it takes to be successful. And one day I woke up and my body was covered head to toe in hives and I wasn't allergic to anything. I went to the doctor probably first time in years and they took my blood test. They said, something's really wrong. We can't diagnose it just yet. But uh, go to this doctor, go to this specialist. And all of a sudden, I started going to doctors. I haven't been to doctors in a decade. And nobody could pinpoint what it was. But I was getting progressively worse where I couldn't move my joints. I was in excruciating pain. And no one could tell me specifically what it was. There was a lot of theories. There was a lot of opinions. But everybody was of the opinion that it's going to get worse, that it's a rare disease. And that you need to go on steroids for the rest of your life. And that's when I knew that I needed a break. I didn't want to go on steroids. I wanted to have more children. I didn't want to um, be the person that would be, and I'm not advising anybody else, by the way, not to take doctor's orders. That was just me, what I decided to do. And I knew that my body, my mind, and my spirit were like screaming for me to stop. I just couldn't work at this intensity at this capacity any longer it was like a breaking point yeah. of you being out of alignment yeah yeah and, and your body was physically manifesting yeah. it was just shutting point. down yeah and it took about three years for me trying everything that you could imagine uh you know acupuncture western medicine eastern medicine everything in between healing modalities nothing was working and i said you know 
maybe I should listen to the doctor because it's just getting worse. And now I'm in physical pain to the point that I can't get out of bed. Uh, my eyes would hurt if I would be in the light. My teeth would hurt. It would just be the most craziest thing. And I decided that um, I needed to get to know myself because all I knew was how to perform. I was a good performer. I knew how to raise money. I knew how to write business plans. I knew how to help other people uh, become successful. What I didn't know was how do I kind of take a break and not ruin everything that I built? Because I thought if I would stop even for a second, that I would go back to being really poor the way that me and my sister grew up and my family grew up. And I just couldn't allow that because I promised myself that when I'm going to have kids, my kids will have everything and they will be spoiled with love and presence and everything that I didn't have. So I can't stop. So I think it was also a mental thing, feeling that everything will be taken away if I rest or nobody could do it like me. So I don't, can't have, I had bunch of people on my team always that did absolutely nothing. They just took advantage because I didn't trust people. So I had to kind of take a step back and uh, reassess my life because now I didn't have a choice. My body was just breaking down and I couldn't function anymore. And I was also in a personal relationship where my relationship was very much tied into businesses and I was very happy, unhappy, sorry, personally. And I just thought that there's no way out because, because it was just. There's so much crossover. Yeah. yeah. You've built so much yeah. together. It's just, yeah. it's like, it's just, it's like it's web. Yeah. You can't undo. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think that a lot of women convince themselves that that's just how it is. If he doesn't cheat on you and he doesn't beat you, that's how I was raised, that you should be lucky because even if he does those things, that's okay. That's what men do. And, you know, I just knew that. I don't want to live like people in my family. I don't want to live like many women that I knew. I just wanted to be happy. You know, since I was a child, I didn't require a lot. I required sunshine. I required, I, I love people. I always had a lot of friends around me and I just wanted to make people happy. And I just knew that I built all these things and now I had two kids and my kids had everything that I could dream of. And my kids were kind of mean and I, I couldn't understand, like, where was the disconnect? Because I would give them so much love and I would give them so many presents. The disconnect was they didn't have access to me. I wasn't available emotionally to my children, to my team members, to myself. I was a performer. And this uh, health situation forced me to stop. It was no longer like I just couldn't get out of bed. So I had to sleep, I had to nap, I had to go in sunshine, I had to do anything to make myself smile so I just wouldn't physically break down further. And I started to understand that there's a part of me that just never lived. I could buy myself what I want, I could go where I want, but I don't want anything. All of a sudden, like, I just didn't want anything. And I started asking myself, so like, when do you get happy? Because I reached the milestones that I set for myself and I had everything on the outside, but I was so, so unhappy. And everybody that I would speak to would just say, you're ungrateful. You know, you're so lucky. And I'm like, oh, luck has nothing to do with it. This this took years in, in the making. This didn't happen overnight. You're so lucky. You should just be grateful. That's what everyone in my family thought. That's what my friends at the time thought. What, did your, what did your husband think? My husband didn't uh, like me to think. You know, he married a very different type of person than I am today. And he didn't really care about my opinion. He just thought that I need to immediately get better and get back to work. Because I was uh, being lazy and I was not being disciplined. And how dare I take naps or do anything else because that's for losers. So it was a really difficult time in my life because I just realized that everything that I built was not what I wanted. And, uh, but I also felt like I don't have an option. Like I'm, I'm trapped. Okay. So what do you do now to find happiness? You deconstructed the whole life. I hired a mentor and, um, for business, of course, because I could only justify hiring someone to expand you know, business, obviously not myself, God forbid, I would, I would hire someone to help me, but no, no, no. So I hired a mentor. It's wild how stubborn you can be even like at your lowest points. Yeah. Yeah. 
And the first thing this guy asked me is like, what do you want? Like, like if I could wave a magic wand and give you anything that you want, what do you want? I honestly couldn't answer that question. I just said, I just want to be happy. He's like, what does that look like? He goes, like, if you could have a perfect life, like, what does that look like? And I literally described it. Like, I want my kids to be close to me. I don't want to be a stay-at-home mom, but I want to work with people that I really respect. I want to help other people. And uh, I want to genuinely be happy. He goes, like, so what's preventing you from doing that? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> me? He goes, right. So where can you start? Where can you start? And I really was so confused. I'm like, that's why I hired you. I, I don't know. And then he goes, I think you need to um, learn to be a leader. That starts with you. Uh, you can lead people. If you don't know how to lead yourself, you will never build anything sustainable or worth building. If you're doing it just to chase money and to get honest with yourself. And you also need to forgive yourself. And I'm like, what do you mean? For what? For being brave because you're going to lose a lot of people and you're going to lose a lot of things to get to the happy place. And you have to be willing to go there. Otherwise, nothing's going to change and you will always be stuck. Stuck is a choice. Not having clarity is a choice. All of those choices can be different when you choose to take action. Nothing is going to happen in your head. You have to take action. You have to take massive action in a different direction of your own happiness. You want to build uh, something that's worth building, go do it and be willing to fail. You don't like people that you currently have working for you. Stop feeling bad for them. Fire them. You have to become a leader. And I didn't know how to do that. So I started to learn and I started to learn how to become a better mom because that was really important to me. I started to spend more time with my kids. I stopped running away. I stopped being busy and I started finding time for things that really, really, truly mattered. Not theoretically, not one day, not when I hit this goal, not when, if, but like today. And I started living my life from that moment on. If if today's my last day on earth, am I happy with what I'm doing? And I don't mean like you have to do everything that makes you happy that you just, you know, want to do nothing. That's not what I mean. I mean, are you proud of yourself? Are you living in integrity with your own values? Whatever that is. Are you brave enough to cut people out of your life that's out of alignment for you? And you have to ask yourself that every day. Because we don't teach kids or help people by speaking. We do it by doing and that's when uh, things started getting radically bad because <laughs> started losing friends. And I decided that I don't want to be married anymore. And I decided that uh, I don't want to have a close relationship with my parents anymore because they weren't uh, feeding my happiness. And it was really difficult and was really lonely. And it was really confusing because... I'm supposed to get happier, but I'm just losing everything that I've worked so hard to build. And then um, I have never been through a business lawsuit before. Uh, my husband and I went into business with someone that we did business with before, and that person went rogue and used uh, misappropriated company funds, uh, commingled it with client funds, and we had to sue him. There, there was no other way. I didn't want to. I don't believe in lawsuits, but we had to. And... Uh, this lawsuit has taken the wind out of my sails. It was a three-year nightmare. It caused multiple six figures. We won the lawsuit and couldn't collect a penny, still can. $1.6 million plus interest, can't collect a single penny. Uh, we had to pull kids out of private school. It was really difficult. It was really difficult because it was finger pointing, you did this, uh, I said it to my husband. He said, you did this to me and blah, 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 blah. But it, it was a really big blessing because I learned a lot of things during that time. I learned that um, business is very personal. Most people want to separate the two, but in my experience, it's not. It's very, very personal. If you chase money, you will never, ever have money sustainably, and you will always be chasing if you decide to do business with people that don't have your values, then you're asking for trouble. Money cannot be the leader in your life. 
you have to be the leader in your life. And again, you have to be brave enough to say no, but you also have to be brave enough to fail enough times until you get that yes with the people that are your people and, and are meant for you. This lawsuit also opened up my eyes to many different things. Uh, you know, I knew that I could no longer work with my husband. I needed to make a break. I've never, I shouldn't say never, because I've done it in my early 20s, but I'm 43. So I'd say for the majority of my life, I haven't done things on my own. It has been us, not me. And it was really scary to say like, oh, I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to, you know, build this by myself. And uh, my kids required more attention because they started getting older and I had to be there for them. So it was an interesting time. And then COVID happened and everybody was stuck at home and it was very, very difficult. I have never spent that much time with my husband or my kids because we were never home. We're always busy. And I had to learn to really sit with myself and find peace being doing nothing and being just with me. And it was very, very difficult because my whole life I was running away. So this was like a this was like a, an inflection point of all these different things. Yeah. So lawsuit, burnout, yeah. health, mentor, COVID. Yeah. So sometimes the universe shows shows <laughs> yeah. you everything at once. Yeah. Because yeah. it wants to shake you up. So <laughs> that's wild. So as you're going through COVID, um, you're solidifying what your future is going to look like. And all these compounding stressors, I think, are probably further. So they're, they're helping you double down on on the decisions you're making. Yeah. So as you go through COVID, you realize that you no longer want to be with your husband. You're not going to be in business with a lot of these people that you're in business with ever again. Um, you want to have a better relationship with your children, less of one with your parents. Like so many shifts happening simultaneously. Yeah. So how do you architect this life for you that is going to be happiness? Because you're probably still in the process of this now. COVID was not that long ago, but at least you've sort of progressed down this path. Yeah. I learned something really important that I think would help a lot of people. We all know what to do. Mm -hmm. We're just looking for someone else to tell us because they may be more successful or they may have more accolades after the name. The truth is we know what to do right? I don't need to pay someone to tell me about a strategy. I've built businesses before, but we pay people to give ourselves an excuse to say, oh, it's their fault. This thing didn't work. What really moved the needle for me financially, professionally, uh, bringing in wonderful new friends into my life and everything in between was radical forgiveness toward myself, toward situations, toward, uh, things that didn't work out and taking radical responsibility for my decisions and understanding that it's me versus me. There's no other people. If someone cheated me in business, where have I been cheating myself? Right? You have to start asking yourself honest questions for honest reflection if you really desire change. Right? So I had to start asking myself if I want to have friends that are loyal and committed. Yeah, I'm loyal and committed, but am I loyal and committed to myself? Mm -hmm. How could I be a good friend if I'm not being a good friend to myself? So I had to really start looking at myself as if I want something, it starts with me. If I ask another person of something, I have to do it, not think about it. If I want a committed client, I have to be a committed person first. If I want to work with people that are decisive, my energy has to be decisive. And everything radically changed. The relationships that I built didn't go out, out the window. There were a lot of good people that all of a sudden started giving me clients. There were a lot of good people that remembered 10 years ago that I employed them when they did absolutely nothing for me because I've never called in favors. So the good that you do doesn't go unnoticed. It does come back to you. It just doesn't come back to exactly the second that you may want it, right? I think that caring about people is something that a lot of women have naturally. They're just who we are. We nurture people. But society tells us that that's weak. You know, high performance is about outperforming another person, but it's really outperforming yourself 
and your limitations. And this is why you're speaking about how feminism is is yeah. incorrect. It's almost like a, a bastardized version 100%. of what it should be. 100%. Women don't know that uh, it's your intuition that's your superpower because you're taught that it's bullshit and it doesn't exist. It's not bullshit. It's if you look at investments, right? Women are running countries. They're outperforming male-run hedge funds two to one. There's nothing wrong with men. They're brilliant men. I hire men. I work with men. There's nothing wrong with men. But women are running countries, and they're still waiting for someone to give them permission to negotiate a better deal for themselves or to ask for what they really want or to become that type of friend that they really want to have. If you're the type of woman that gossips and... Uh, talks ne negatively about others and puts other people down to make yourself feel good, you're never going to have solid friendships. No matter how much you convince yourself, how much you give to charity or what a great person you are, you could hide from some of the people some of the time. You cannot hide from yourself all of the time. When you realize that everything that you want starts with you, everything that you want will come into your life the second that you stop trying. A lot of times when I work with clients, they're going to say, I've tried all these things. I'm trying so hard. It just doesn't work. You have to make a decision that you're not going to try, that you're going to do it. Whether it takes you six months or a year, you're doing it. You're not trying it. You're not kind of uh, it, like it's a dress. I'm going to try on this strategy. And then when it doesn't work, the second it doesn't work, I'm going to go look for a new shiny object because all of us do that, right? We have to decide and commit that our dream is non-negotiable. I don't care how long it takes me. I'm worth it, right? At the end of the day, your relationships are your biggest assets, right? But it starts with your relationship with you. If you don't like yourself, you can't be a good friend. You can't be a good leader. How can you lead other people to help you build a big vision if you don't even believe in your vision, really? If you give up on yourself the second that you hear a word no, or if you try to mm -hmm. constantly find the magic bullet, the secret is... The magic to success is you, right? Elon Musk has been raising money, going to the moon for years and years. I haven't been to the moon yet. Have you? No. Right? No. But he's so good at rolling people into his vision that it's just it's non negotiable. And now if people you... are excited about something they'll probably never even participate exactly. in. <laughs> exactly. Being a good leader is being able to corral excitement and momentum and manufacture safety for people before they could touch it. That's what I learned. And it starts with you. If you can't sell yourself on the idea that every door is going to get closed in your face and you will hear a hundred no's until, until it's a yes, if you're going to break down and blame yourself, shame yourself, and try to blame other people, things will not work out. You will always be trying and you will always be blaming economy, society, circumstances, whether you're a man, you're a woman, uh, your, you know, your uh, religion and anything else that you can hang your hat on. Because the truth is, it has nothing to do with any of that. You haven't decided. You're interested. You're not committed. That's really the difference. Because when you're committed, you don't stop. You can ask anyone that's a mom, right? Mm -hmm. If something was, God forbid, going to happen to your child, like what would you do? Oh, nothing. Nothing short of a miracle. Like she would perform a miracle to help her child. Yet, would you do that for yourself? Oh, no, I don't have time. I don't have the energy. I don't have the money. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have when it comes to us, right? And I think we have to start realizing that your children, your employees, your dreams are not going to get built by thinking about it, by hoping about it, by kind of like sitting on the sidelines and watching other people and just copying it because you're not another person. Yes, you can copy another person's steps to success, but it still has to be you infused into it. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. When we hire people just for strategy, people are giving us their strategy. But why does it work for one person, but it doesn't work for another person? Because it's out of alignment, right? So if one person is really good on camera and they hire someone who's great on camera as well, it works, mm -hmm. right? Because you're hiring someone to help you with what you already are good at. But if I'm an introvert and I don't want to dance on reels and I hire someone that's phenomenal at that and they tell me go dance on reels and you have to test and you have to do this and I kind of do it a couple of times. I'm like, no, no, this sucks. This is horrible. This is not what I paid for. No, the strategy doesn't suck. It works. 
people make a lot of money it just doesn't work for you and you have to be honest with yourself and say that's okay that i made the investment this is what it cost me to learn to get an alignment but we don't do that a lot of times we just blame whether it's in our personal relationships or in business we make a decision and we don't stand behind it or we just don't have the courage to say that it's not for me but i also think that there's inauthentic teachers yes that should be oh my gosh, <laughs> better <yes. laughs> maybe better better communicating what can and can't work i mean look there are people that are great marketers but the product behind you know mm. the pretty bow is garbage that's always been the case. You know, there's always the used car salesman mentality people that are transactional, that just want to, you know, sell you whatever they could sell you. And then there are people that are genuinely successful because they care about their clients. One of the things that I learned on my journey is that we always want more clients. If you ask any business person, what do you want? More clients. Send me, send me people here and then I'll be happy because I could just help these people. The truth is you don't need more you actually need less. If you spend your energy serving the people that already paid you, you would never need more clients. You don't need more traffic. You need to make sure that what you're offering is so good and solid and constantly refined. And that takes you not being in your ego. That takes you being honest and saying, maybe the product is 60%, you know, good. Yeah. And you keep on refining it and you keep on making it better. And more and more people are gonna tell their friends. You go viral not only by focusing on going viral. You go viral really in any marketplace by focusing on your customer, not on yourself, not, not on, on how quickly can I sell this. The sales just happen, like almost like magic when you genuinely care about the customer. So instead of focusing all your energy on how to, where do I get more clients? What platform? Where do I go? What's a traffic source? What's the secret? Uh, do I launch a podcast? Like, what do I do? People are always like, like, what do you do? What do you do? You get quiet and you ask yourself, how can I make what I have already built better? A quick break from this podcast to recommend another podcast that you have to check out. It's called The Product Boss. It's hosted by Jacqueline and Mina. It's part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. If you have a physical product, this podcast is hyper tailored to you. It's going to help you take your business to the next level. In a recent episode, for example, they spoke about the power of TikTok for product businesses and how to use it to drive sales. And as somebody who is a little new to TikTok, I really learned some great tips for creating content that actually converts viewers into customers. They have a workshop style format that makes it really easy to follow along to take your business to the next level. So if you sell physical products, subscribe to The Product Boss wherever you get your podcast to unlock social media, marketing, and business strategies that create your dream business and then your dream life. Why did you want to talk about business models? Um, why do I want to talk about it? Yeah, why, why are business models so important? Because we're, we spoke about just in the past five minutes, you spoke about how there's so many different marketing strategies mm -hmm. you can try and how to properly penetrate a market like you can for example just focus on product basically building the best product out mm -hmm. there and then you will spread that product through word of mouth but i know that you speak a lot about business models and why people should look at different ones and and what does that mean for an entrepreneur or somebody who's starting something new is it that is it sort of uh, you know playing off what you just mentioned they don't have to follow what all their other peers have already done they can sort of pave their own way or what do you mean by business models so there's many ways to build a mousetrap yeah. in every niche and in every industry. But let's just speak about coaches and consultants because that's specifically what I focus on. This applies to anything and everyone, but it'll be more context for okay. those people, right? So how do you build anything, right? You have an idea. You bring this idea to the market. People start paying you. And then you're like, oh, my God, we're going to be rich because this is going to be amazing. And it's going to be the next Apple, right? We sell ourselves on that idea. And a lot of times it just doesn't work out that way, right? But there's different business models in, in everything that you do, right? They're selling one-to-one. -one, they're selling one-to-many. Mm -hmm. They're speaking from the stage. There's there's selling to corporate. There's just so many ways that you could do the same thing, right? But Similar to different ways you could market it. Exactly. Yeah. But what happens a lot of times is we'll hire someone that's successful. They'll teach us that model, right? Yeah. And then we'll be like, oh, no, this is I'm not doing this. 
sometimes I'm not doing this because I'm lazy and because I'm afraid that that's one side of the street, but sometimes it's just out of alignment. It's just not what I could sustainably do because it doesn't work with who I am. And you have to be honest, right? The market will tell you, keep on doing more, right? So as you grow bigger team, as you grow more products, mm -hmm. as you grow more automations, as you grow more and more and more, what I found is that you actually need less. So for example, if you wanted to make $50,000 a month, right? As a coach or consultant, I think a lot of people, once you hit that goal and you hit a consistent, then you could scale more predictable because you've kind of uh, built a really fabulous foundation, right? So what will people do? They'll come up with a lot of different offers, with a lot of different products. They'll test different platforms. They will be doing a lot of different things to hit that number. They'll try and do everything. Everything. Yeah. And it works. All of it works. There isn't, like, there isn't, if you go to TikTok versus go to LinkedIn, they all work because there are people that make millions and millions of dollars every day on those platforms. Not once a month, every single day, people make money. But what will happen is you will get burnt out because you are just kind of chasing so many rabbits. And at the same time, you will just run out of fuel every single day. And you will think that the only way, because the so many books and so many gurus and experts, theoretical mm. experts will tell you <laughs> that you need more, right? So bigger team. Bigger team comes with more responsibility and it takes more of your time. Yes, you're removing yourself from one thing, but you're putting yourself in something else, right? Bigger team is an investment. People don't stay. People are not loyal. People steal you things. All issues that all of us face when we have a team. Then we start breaking down like, oh, oh my God, why did I just do this to myself, right? More products, more products, more testing. More things you add to the plate, more things to break and more bottlenecks that you need to, as a leader, figure out how to plug those holes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the whole thing breaks. And all of a sudden, what you've built doesn't work anymore because you're putting all your energy and your resources into something new. But you feel stuck. Yeah. Yeah. You feel that hiring people, um, paying people a lot of money, um, investing and making good decisions, but it's just not working for me. You know, it's interesting when you talk about this, like it just brings me back to like, you know, where I'm living in my life with marketing and even like how I took this podcast off the ground and it was always omni-channel, omni-channel, omni-channel. Mm -hmm. And then it turns into this like hellish hamster wheel of having to keep up mm -hmm. with all these different social platforms and all these different mediums all the time. And, mm -hmm. you know, luckily I was able to scale the podcast out to, to hire a team to support it. But day one, I was just show up everywhere all the time. And in hindsight, hindsight's always 2020. I see people that just laser focus on one platform and do one thing exceptionally well yeah. and market in one exactly what you're saying. And then after after they kill it at that, then you can sort of scale to all the other or you can you can go to all the other places. But I think a lot of people just try and do everything at once. It's because we, it, when you read a book of success, right? Most of them will, ju will just tell you like, be resilient, y you know, like try harder, <laughs> go the extra mile. Everything's always more. It's even right? like multiple yeah. streams of income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, 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 Who more, has right? multiple streams of income right. successfully day one? No, no one. one. No you one. You make a shit ton of money, yeah. then maybe you buy some businesses, right. you invest in real estate. Wait, and how, about, and how about you make wrong decisions and that's okay too, yeah. because you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But no one wants to speak about that because that's not sexy. Nobody wants to talk about failure, but I don't look at failure as failure. Like when I speak to my kids, then they're like, oh, I don't want to try this. Like I'm not good at this. I tell them the same thing that I say to myself. People that are really successful try a lot of things and they need you have to look at it as a science experiment. You need a couple of explosions to know what ingredient not to put in because it's a really thin line before exploding in a great way mm -hmm. and everything going to shit, right? But you need those explosions. So you kind of understand how to add a little bit less here or add a little bit more here, right? The concept of more is just built by marketers, the people that want you to buy more of their things. Mm -hmm. They have to start getting smarter and use discernment and understand that, do you need to be on every platform? No. Do you want to be? Why? Is it for your ego so you're so relevant and because the market is telling you omnipresence, om omnipresence? And also, what are you doing on these platforms? Like, you could be on a lot of platforms by running ads just for, for people to get to know you. Mm -hmm. Right. And that doesn't require you physically pumping out content and being busy. Right. You want to start saying to yourself, how do I not be busy? 
And why am I so busy? Like, what am I running away from? That's always the underlining thing. Like, what am I afraid of? Why am I staying so busy and working so hard? You know, the premise of working hard leads to success is the biggest bullshit of our lives because people that drive buses, that are secretaries, that are waiters, that are stock boys, they work really hard. You know, people that work night shifts, that's really, really hard work. Why aren't those people successful? Because success is not just built on hard work. It's not. It's the myth since, because when we go to school, and this is going to sound a little political, just my, well, isn't my this, isn't opinion. is this like assembly line, like the Ford assembly line? Exactly. Yes. It just, it's my opinion. But when we go to school, we don't go to school to be creative or, or to have any outside ideas, right? School is, is, think about it, like projects, right, are not for creative thinkers. Get in a group and help the group get a good grade on the project. But what if I want to put out something innovative and exciting? Nobody cares about you. It's an assembly line of workers, right? That's what school was created for. And we learned that you work really hard and then you get a diploma and you get a good job. And if you deviate from that, you could ruin your whole life. So it's always that underlying thing like, Oh, maybe I'm ruining my life because I'm deviating from what I'm told. And it boils and it goes up to really unhealthy things, right? Because if that's foundational, then we hire people to kind of tell us what to do. And we invest money that we don't have because, oh, maybe it's this shiny new thing that's going to save everything. Mm -hmm. And I'll be good and I'll listen and I'll take action. And I don't care if I get sick, but I'll do it. I'll go the extra mile. Like, you know, when Gary Vee says... Just outwork people. Or when Grant Cardone says, you know, no is for losers. Just call them a million times. That's sexy marketing because they don't do that. But let's just be honest. I think Grant Cardone does that. I don't love his sales tactics. <laughs> I mean, if you go to his $100,000 mastermind, honestly, you will see a very different side of him that you don't see on social media. He's actually very, very different and very, very nice and very smart. But that's just not his brand. Oh, I, I no, no, I know he's smart. I just don't love his sales yeah. strategy. But, but yes, I, I do agree that there's probably some marketing yes. component. Built there's into a that. lot of marketing component yeah. to a lot of the people that you admire are not the people that you would see if you work with them at a high level. Yeah, they're, they're just very, very different. There's the personality, the actor, and then there's the reality. Right. And a lot of us don't realize that. So we're comparing ourselves to something that doesn't even exist. Mm -hmm. And we're doing more and more and more. And you'll see people spending years doing everything and it's it's not working. I'm trying everything and it's not working. So for me, it was really understanding for myself. I've developed a business model that's a little different. It's outside of the box. And I didn't come up with it theoretical. It wasn't like let me go and get a certification over the weekend and then kind of put this thing together. I failed at a lot of things and I've succeeded at a lot of things. And what I've learned for me is that everything is based off of a relationship. So working hard doesn't just mean I do shit every day that doesn't work and I convince myself that I'm just working really hard for this unicorn that's going to happen one day. But really understanding zero to six figures is how. How do I do this? Mm -hmm. How do I move the needle? How? Six figures and beyond who? Who is that person that I need to meet, that I need to build a relationship with, that I need to bring value to them first to help me where I want to go? So if I was raising money today, I wouldn't be raising money like I did 20 years ago because I had no idea what anything was, right? I would meet the right people and offer them value and they would connect me with people that write checks, because there are people that write checks for companies every day. But what we don't realize, again, because we're working so hard, is that you don't need to do a thousand investor presentations. You actually need to understand what's in it for them. And most people don't think that way. Why should someone write you a check? Not because you're a woman or because you're a minority or because of your story. That's all nice. But I invest in things. I don't write checks because you're a woman. I love women. I'm, I'm all for women. Why should I give you my money? But people don't want to look at things. They just want to work hard on their pitch decks and they want to make prettier logos and they want to make prettier presentations, but they don't want to tell an investor, when do I get my money back? Why should I give you the money and not someone else?
We have to start mastering the real basics and also relationships. It may take you two years to build a relationship with someone who can open up a door for you. You can be short-sighted. You also can be someone that just uses people mm -hmm. and pretends to be nice just because you want something. If you're genuinely a person that cares about other people and wants to see other people when someone may have a lot more money than you, but they may be struggling with their kids and you may give them advice that will literally change their lives. That person will want to reciprocate back to you, but you have to get to know that person genuinely, not just pushing something down their throat because it's going to benefit you in the short term, right? That's another, so that's a really good point because I think that it's almost like there's sort of two levels of people that I normally see. There's people that are very superficial that are the first five minutes that I meet you, I want to do a transaction with you. And then there's people that put a month of effort into that relationship, but then get visibly angry mm -hmm. when you don't give them mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. There's very few people that are genuinely altruistic people. And I don't think it's, sorry, I want to rephrase. I don't think there's few people that are altruistic. I think that society urgency, ev mm -hmm. getting everything immediately in our daily lives has trained people subconsciously to expect results immediately from yeah. anything they do, including human relationships, mm -hmm. which is absolutely fucking wild. You cannot human, you cannot Uber a human relationship, right? You but can't hack it. You can't hack it, yeah. but people believe that. And, and I think that it actually like really well-meaning people just don't understand why it takes an individual who has achieved success time to trust them to build something together, to invest in them. Yeah. It, it takes a long time before you ever want to do business, because especially if you've achieved success, you've been burnt by so many people mm -hmm. along the way. I love that, I, I love that advice. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's just like very, I think it's very smart and I see it a lot. I think that this is a really good business strategy and people don't use it, right? So before you invest in doing Harmozy style videos, mm -hmm. why don't you invest in understanding your value, right? Not from an egotistic, perspective because everyone is valuable every person i genuinely believe this that whether you believe in god or not i believe in god again people are very sensitive when you use the word god <laughs> i believe that when god made us he literally took a piece of himself and put that piece into every person and we can be godly we can be amazing we can be caring we are all those things but we are taught not to be because that's weak especially in business don't show them your weakness don't show them that you're afraid don't show them why not why not but you also have to understand that if i spend 20 years building relationships and i met you over dinner i'm not opening up my rolodex to you just because you're a woman or just because you know my family member or just because we're connected through you know uh business associates yeah. you also have to not get so visibly disappointed that you don't get what you want because if you genuinely build a relationship you will have more business i don't care what you do then you will know what to do with. And you also have to understand that you have to be brave. Bravery is what separates people that are really successful from those that are trying. You have to be brave to fail. And you have to be brave to tell people that you failed. A lot of times when we turn on social media, we see a glamorized, you know, audited version of someone's mm -hmm. life. And we compare ourselves to that version and we feel like imposters not knowing that that person doesn't drive that Lamborghini, not knowing that that person doesn't have those followers, not knowing that that person doesn't have any of the things that you are comparing yourself to and feeling small next to, right? So what I found is a lot of times when people want to put out, you know, content, they're emulating someone else's success that they don't even have, and they try to become someone else that they're never going to be, not because you can't have that car. Of course you can. You can have anything that you want if that's what you really want. But I promise you that once you get whatever you're chasing, you're going to be very unhappy. I promise you that because I've done it at so many levels. The key is really understanding what value do you bring to this world? Genuinely, honestly, maybe your value is intuition. Maybe your value is that you genuinely care. Maybe your value is that you connect people. Maybe you have a combination of these skill sets. Those are really valuable things that people genuinely want. While you're trying to sell them your agency services, why don't you get to know them? Why don't you get to know people as human beings and understand how you could potentially support them, right? 
I've developed a business model which is very different than what most coaches and consultants do because they think it's weird. A lot of people think it's weird and they don't think it's scalable because they don't understand it. So I'll break it down here. And uh, if you have any questions, by the way, reach out to me on Instagram because I could speak for 10 hours about this model. This model came from me failing. This model came from me hearing a lot of no's and it came from me investing in a lot of shiny objects. I've invested a lot of money just to understand that a lot of people don't know what they're doing. They're selling you a bunch of nonsense. Their courses they didn't even write or create. Their programs are garbage that are filled with people that are teaching the garbage that they just sold you online. That They don't even know the content. Like I've been in masterminds that cost $35,000 where a person couldn't read a balance sheet and they want me to do business for them. <laughs> $35,000 to get in the room with the right people. I mean, who screened these people? Were they screened for having a pulse? You know what I mean? It's not a knock on anyone. It's you have to start using your discernment, right? And you have to start understanding, like, where are you strong? I promise you, you have strength. And someone else has that weakness. When you can match those two things, that's where you win. So typically when I meet a coach, consultant, or speaker, they have a one-on-one -on -one program or a group program. They're trying to do the omnipresent thing. They're mm -hmm. making money and they are burned out. They can't take it anymore. They just don't know what else they could do. They're doing it. They're investing. They're going to masterminds, which suck. They are spending time with, with the people that are more successful than them, that, that are just selling them more things that they don't need. And they're like, like, how do I not kill what I've built? But I don't want to live like this anymore. And I've lived like that. Yeah, it's a hamster many, wheel many that you're stuck years, on. Yeah. And you just feel like there's no way out because you work so hard to build to where you are that you're not willing just to say, oh, fuck it. Like, I'll just destroy it. Like, you can't. You feel guilty for spending the time, for being away from your family, for you know, maybe firing people that are depending on you and their families. So you constantly are like, I'm so miserable here. It's like being in a relationship that you hate, but you feel guilty because you stay for the kids. And I've been in both of these business and personal relationships. And I could tell you that it sucks being in this place. It sucks feeling like you're stuck. So my model is a love child of finding love for myself and understanding how to use your strength to get paid. You don't need to get paid for what you do. You can get paid for who you are. And I'll say that again because it's really confusing to people. You don't need to get paid for what you do. You can get paid for who you are. But you have to be very specific and intentional with how you s support people. What, how do you serve people? A lot of people don't like that word. I'm not a servant. I'm, you know, I'm an influencer or, I, or I'm a founder. or That's fine. Whatever you want to call it. What value do you bring to someone? And are you willing to guarantee a result? Most people's answer is no. And by guarantee a result, I don't mean pay me $30,000 and if it doesn't work out, I'll work with you for free. That's not guaranteeing a result. Because if it didn't work out, why do I want to continue working with you, right? So what I've developed is an intensives model. If someone will spend two days with you as a coach and, con and consultant and take your nine months program and get one specific result from you in two days, they don't want to go anywhere. They're sold. You That's know, the KPI that you found. Yeah. That's the carrot. Yes. Okay. So how does it work? Simple. Uh, I'll. There's many, many ways to skin this cat. But let's. And by the way, we don't skin cats because people are really <laughs> sensitive. <laughs> you would be surprised how many stages I've spoken. I don't know. I would say something like like skin a cat, and yeah. then people would be like, "Oh my god, you're racist against cats." It would be like, "What? There's such a thing as oh my goodness. being racist against cats?" Yes, <laughs> yes, I was called a racist against cats and a bunch of other things. So now every time that I'm just being myself, I will do, I will do a sensitivity check in for those that are very sensitive. Oh, okay, fair. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> mo mo moving on. So if if you're a fitness coach and you tell people, here's my promise to you: eat all the pasta you want, eat all, the, drink all the wine you want, and lose thirty pounds in ninety days. If I listen to this, I'll be like, yeah, right, no way. But if I like pasta, there's a part of me that will be like, what if? Mm -hmm. Like okay. what? What if? Like I want to try it. I will pay you. But I will start having buyer's remorse the second that I hit pay. And I will start telling myself, you know what? It's probably full of shit. I'm probably crazy thinking that this is going to work. 
So you're but, living in the program already thinking it's a scam. But if it works, oh my God, I'm going to be so excited. I'm going to tell all my friends. Something that happens during activation, if your stuff really works, right? The second someone loses that first pound, they're sold. They're like, oh my God, I have to tell everyone that I know I have been drinking wine and I've lost weight. Whatever this person told me to do, their method actually works. Like, I cannot believe it. I thought it was a scam. Mm -hmm. People start telling everybody that they know because most of the times it doesn't work. So if you're an expert and you know what you're doing and your method actually works, this doesn't work for beginners. You have to already be really good at what you do. You have to have really happy clients. You have to have real social proof, not for other people, for yourself. You have to know that you're good at this thing because otherwise it will not work, right? So activation, the second you activated someone, they raise their hand and they say, how do I work with you further? It's natural. People don't want to invest in coaches, consultants, or masterminds. I know it's a big, uh, when I say that people are like, what do you mean? It's a huge industry. People get burned all the time. There's more bad than good. I come from the the I come from the view growing up that they're all scams. I I mean it's so interesting. You go industry by industry, and people have different perspectives. I yeah. know in real estate they're very popular. Yeah. Coming from a tech background mm -hmm. where I built SaaS companies, you you don't do that. You go to conferences, mm -hmm. you go to keynotes, you go to panels, and you listen to other leaders that have built unicorns. But you don't go to masterminds. Masterminds were not like a thing, especially coming from a major city. I think that. I think that masterminds really targeted people that were the smartest person in their smaller city and they didn't have mentors or people around them. So fortunately, I always had tons of access. So I never felt that I needed to do a mastermind ever. And then you come down to Miami and it's like every two days there's yeah. a new mastermind and they're all $50,000. The thought of spending $50,000 and we've had this conversation yeah. offline before to like get someone, get access to somebody, it like, my my ego can't take it. Like, what what kind of person has the balls to ask me for fifty thousand dollars to talk to me and teach me shit? All you know. So there's a yeah. whole other different mindset. So yeah. some people are so bought into them because mm -hmm. some people go to like they spend half a million dollars a year on masterminds. Some people can never stand them, and then they get like a whiff mm -hmm. of like Ty Lopez, mm -hmm. and then. <laughs> and, uh, and allegedly, Ty yeah. Lopez's stuff is not great. And then they'll never go to another one ever again. You have to understand that if they all sucked, there would be no market. Correct. For it. So it, logically, it doesn't ones. even yeah. make sense to what I'm saying. But. There are good ones. There are. I've yeah. been to really bad ones and I've been to really great ones. Right. And But they're all new. The concept of a guru mm -hmm. yes. is new and yes. novel. Yes. And the bar to marketing yourself on the internet is so damn low that it has unfortunately led to the proliferation of shitty coaches. But this gives you a phenomenal opportunity if you're an expert. If you're Correct. good at what you do, you actually have a phenomenal opportunity. You never have to shame or, or say, oh, this person is horrible. You never have to do that because if your stuff is genuinely good and you could get in front of people and produce results, people will rave about you. Because people are so used to getting burned and people are so used to being like, this is just insanity. Look, there's a market for everyone. There's mm -hmm. a mainstream market and then there's a specialty market, right? I am not, my model does not work mainstream. I'm not speaking about organizing a result for a thousand people live, uh, Tony Robbins style. No, this is, this, this is not it. What I'm speaking about is if you, again, if you're good at what you do and you want to genuinely build relationship with people and you invite them to a result. So if you're an agency and you run ads for people, one of the results that you could do, and we've done this with a client recently is we will write your ads and set everything up for you this weekend and show you how we did it. So if you want to work with us, great. If you don't, everything is done. If I'm busy, that's valuable to me. You're teaching me and you're doing, and I'm not walking away with a to-do list. What happens that weekend is I get to know you mm -hmm. because I need to get to know you, right? I need to, I want to know you as a person because I'm live with you. This is not a Zoom conversation. We're spending time on a yacht or we're going into a mansion or we're doing something really fun. Most entrepreneurs are dying to do. They are dying to get out of the Zoom of the rat race of making videos, of shooting content and be with other people. So you're taking off a lot of boxes. You're taking off 
what I desire, what I want. I want to meet people. I want to have fun. And I want to get this thing done. Mm -hmm. What happens during this environment is a person's like, I don't have to go hire more people. Like, you're my person. You told me this is what's getting done. It just got done on day one. And on day two, I actually got to have fun and meet great people. And on day two, you tell them, hey, if you receive value here, if you receive the result, how would you like to work together for six months? This is what I have specifically for this group. And typically, 70% of people will raise their hand if you've produced the result. Mm -hmm. Not if you came and rah rahed them and just made them feel good. Anybody could go to an event for $200 to feel good. If somebody is paying you the price points that we found work really well for this model is between two and five thousand dollars for the weekend if somebody's paying you two to five thousand dollars you better produce because people are not coming there to hang out with you they're not looking to just network because people will be like yeah pay me five thousand dollars to go on a yacht why we live in miami there's plenty of boats and yacht charters here that i don't need to pay you to do that but if you genuinely are good at what you do and you infuse some fun into my life and you brought value to me and I got to know you and you told me genuine stories from your life and now I understand what you're about, I don't want to look for another coach. I'm sold. Whether it's a $50,000 product or $20,000 product, I don't care because for a lot of people past six figures, it's time. I don't have time. I, I understand how to make money. I'm looking to make more money. I want to scale what I'm doing. I don't have time. So don't waste my time. Don't insult me. Give me what I came for. Mm -hmm. And if I like you, I'm going to work with you. That's the model. So you're building a relationship. You are honestly giving people what they came for. There's no hiding here, right? This is not a lot of times uh, I will do an audit for someone and they will tell me how amazing they are, how many courses they've sold. And I'll have a five minute conversation with them. I'm like, this won't work for you. You're not going to be able to give people a result. People are not going to go and write a bad review. They are going to go crazy on you live. This is not, this is, there's no hiding here, right? So if I paid you and I came and you didn't deliver anything, I will ask you for a refund now, not seven days from now, like now. And I'm not going to be chasing you. I will ask you in front of everybody here and I will taint this group for you. And it's going to be a problem. So, so the reason why this is the business model that you've chosen mm -hmm. is because it removes the bullshit. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah. So you show up, you deliver your product. Mm -hmm. it, the level of trust that you build with that group is so strong that it's going to turn into an ongoing customer, yep. massive lifetime value. Mm -hmm. And you aren't artificially closing people online. And then basically, because, you know, there's two, there's two kinds of coaches. There's coaches that right. I think are just straight scammers. Mm -hmm. Let's just remove those yeah. out of the bucket. But there's people that I think are better than they actually are. Yeah. And they sell people online because they figured out how to run ads yeah. and how to draw attention, how to convert. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. You could do both. This, but this thing, is feedback. This is yes, massive feedback. Yes, but it's more than it's more than feedback. Uh, specifically for women, women like to chat. We're chatty. We like to tell our friends if we like something or if we don't like something. We we write reviews. That's just what women do, right? So if I came to this thing, I'm telling all my friends. I'm telling all my friends. I'm telling everybody that I know. I'm gonna take pictures. I'm gonna do an Instagram moment. I'm gonna do a TikTok moment. Right? You're getting so much social proof here where you don't have to ask people to give you feedback. You don't have to ask for a testimonial. They're doing it live. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to choose one or the other. A lot of times when people hire us, they do these intensives once a quarter. You don't have to do this every day. But you start to realize that if you wanted to add $50,000 to your monthly revenue, you could do it with one event. And you could stop doing other things or you could continue doing those things. Mm -hmm. There's no one size fits all. There's no, this thing is the, you know, holy grail and everything else sucks. No, everything works for everyone, but just not at the same time. But Some this, people, but this strategy, yes. it allows you to work a lot less. Yes. And that's, still have the income. It was built for doing less. It was built for specific person. It's not for everyone. If you're the type of person that does really well on camera and you like doing master classes, but if you had to show up live, you would rather die because you think it's public speaking. It's not going to work for you. Can we train you? Yes. Have we trained people in the past? Mm -hmm. Yes. But if it's not your natural thing, if you don't like to hug people, if you don't like to see people transform in front of your eyes, 
it's not for you. Some people are not that, like, they don't want to have that type of relationship with a client, right? But if you're the type of person that genuinely cares about people, you want to have fun. You don't want to feel apologetic about having a good time. And I don't mean you invite people to drink. That's not what I mean by fun. I mean, you want to get away from doing what everybody else is doing and do something creative and fun for you and for your clients and create monthly recurring revenue through offering a long-term program that mm -hmm. people can sign up for on the spot. There's a sales strategy here. So you are covering your offer, your traffic, and your conversion in one event. And your conversion must be exponentially it's, higher. It's 70% on an average. That's which is wild. Yeah. It's, which is it's absolutely wild. wild. So this is why when you talk about, you know, the, all these all these life lessons, I love when like life lessons like come together because you're so now like, yeah. you know, solving for burnout solving for solving for being like just this 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 hamster wheel that a lot of people find themselves on like this uh, this lack of alignment across all the things that you're doing yeah. in your life i mean now this is sort of like the way that you've structured this for coaches and i'm sure there i'm curious about like scale because there is a scale component i'm curious about at what point do you take this as a as somebody who's trying to be a coach and then you take it online or at what point you start to expand into different mm -hmm. mediums and that's sort of like a business growth strategy. But this sort of allows you to solve for that first few hundred thousand that is usually the most difficult mm -hmm. before you can hire people to support you. Yeah. Where you're solopreneuring it yeah. and it's absolute hell, right? You know, I think that um, there's many ways to scale this thing. So for us, for example, uh, on the agency side, instead of uh, looking for more coaches and hiring more people, we're actually branching out. And we recently took on a couple of clients that are not coaches, uh, that are attorneys and uh, two clients that are wealth management uh, experts. And we want to uh, see how well the conversions will happen there and test. And if they do, we're going to go a little bit more into that market as, as well. There's a lot of opportunity, right? And there's also opportunity when you run these and when you attend these, you start seeing that you creativity creates opportunity, right? Your event is not going to be like my event mm -hmm. or like or like somebody else's, right? So you're not competing with anyone anymore. And you know what? You may say, like, I have a slew of clients that said, you know what? I don't want to do any more masterclasses. I don't enjoy constantly doing content. I just now want to do content for fun, just so people know what I'm doing and just do these once a month and then relax. And that's a great strategy too. And you could do that and then come back to doing other things if you want to. The beautiful part about being a business owner is you get to choose. But a lot of times we feel that we're stuck. We have no choices. Well, you build yourself a job. Exactly. And it, it's worse than a job. It's worse than a job. <laughs> it's way worse because you can't quit. Yeah. There's too many, too many things are on the line. So... I'm just trying to think like when you, when you built this out, what would be, what would be the advice for say a consultant coach? Um, I will never use the word guru. Speaker. Uh, speaker. Yeah, that's it. Consultant <laughs> coach or speaker. The say, three, three uh, people that. So you say pro they built this they out. Yes. Then, then based on this model, they've had a really good foundation. Give some advice on how they scale without, again, running into some of those burnout problems. Because the second they start to scale, if they mm -hmm. want to scale, of course, mm -hmm. then they can run into some traditional business problems that I'm sure you've solved for as well. Yeah, I mean, simplest way is if you love this model and, and it works for you, uh, you could expand the team behind it. And now instead of uh, the sweet spot of of these events are small intimate groups of 20 people. We're not speaking about, again, doing an event of 500 people, mm -hmm. but you can do a larger event and you can now bring other facilitators and scale with that. You can do joint venture with other people that have communities where they will fill the room for you. You just host the experience, have fun. And there's many ways to scale this without doing anything else. But you have to learn to set the foundation and crawl before you become a marathon runner, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people will do a couple of these and be like, okay, I could do these every day. Mm, no, you know, you, know, you know what I mean? Planning is still involved. You want people to have a phenomenal experience, right? There's key elements that where you don't want to cut corners, mm -hmm. right? But you can't scale it. You can do joint ventures. You can offer now to do this for other people and you could do many, many things to scale this model comfortably to 100K. Past that, I don't know. 
that's not what we do. And we haven't figured that part out for really ourselves or for our clients, because it's not specifically how we serve people and, and support them. But I think from- You said 200K. Yeah, 200K a month. A month, yeah, okay. Yeah. And profit I, margins on these events? Huge. 70% okay. plus. Okay. And sometimes you have no expenses because sometimes uh, when we help our clients build sponsor decks, it's not your regular gold, silver, platinum where we put your logo on the screen when we do presentations. We actually do something very different that I found in my business experience works really, really well. We'll bring someone on and we'll tell them, we'd like to keynote you. And we'll give them the stage and we'll, we'll and or... We'll do a ceremony for them. Like we will award them something or make something really great. All people want to be seen and heard and, and honored. So instead of putting someone's logo somewhere, we tell people, hey, why don't you sponsor a dinner? And during that dinner, we, we will highlight your achievements or and something And that person like that. will have an audience of exactly. highly targeted for their exactly. own business. Exactly. And it's more than highly targeted. We show them how to tell their story. So now they see the person. Mm -hmm. not not the product and then everybody there will reach out whether they want to do business with you or not they now know you know you as a human being and that's really really important for entrepreneurs to start building this muscle stop being the car salesman start being a person don't be interesting uh for someone just to to write you a check be interested ask people questions start investing in relationships because everybody knows someone Right. I don't care where you are, how small the town is. There's always someone that knows someone that can recommend someone and it's a snowball effect. Right. When you start caring about people genuinely and not expecting, OK, I'm targeting Scott so Scott can introduce me to, to this person and then to this person. All those things will happen naturally. Mm -hmm. Nobody even needs to ask you. Right. If somebody brings you value and constantly adds value to your life, you'll be like, how can I help you? What, what uh, are you course, working it's, on? It's natural. Right. Reciprocation. Right. Um, what would be just to, to, to wrap up, what would be one? Uh, and I know that you have something for everybody who's listening and we'll talk about that in a second. But what would be one lesson, a general entrepreneur lesson uh, that you wish you had known when you were much younger? I made a video on this yesterday because uh, somebody asked me that question. Start backing yourself. And what I mean backing yourself is start having your own back. You know how you wish that you have uh, partners that have your best interests at heart personally and professionally. You want to have those kind of friends that, that are like ride or die, right? But when do you do that for yourself? Start backing yourself. Start keeping your word to yourself. Create non-negotiables. This is what I value. And if somebody doesn't go into these buckets, I don't want to be friends with them. I don't want to work with them. I don't care how much money they have. I don't want to do business with them. Start backing yourself and being honest with yourself because you will start creating the type of uh, energy that attracts exactly what you want without you, you lifting a finger. Okay, amazing. Now, um, so you're going to put together something for people that are listening. Explain what that is, and then yeah. we'll do. We'll put like a link in the show notes too. Okay, cool. So typically when I meet someone or people reach out and they're like, okay, I want to do this model. I'm interested. Where do I sign up? There's no course. There's nothing for us to sell you. What we do is we charge for a small business audit. We dive in what you currently have to make sure that we could support you. We won't work with you if you don't have a proven offer if you don't mm -hmm. meet certain criteria because then we can't help you and I don't want to work with you just to work with you we have more than enough business and we only work with people if we genuinely believe that we can help you to get to where you want to go with our services we typically charge $500 for this audit it's worth every penny because we always show you the blind spots that you may not see may not know not just with our model but just in general we'll show you how to raise your authority and do a lot of wonderful things during that audit just to open up your eyes to the opportunities the goals that you're currently sitting on while you think that you're not big enough don't have enough followers not ready uh not there yet all of those things are an illusion your uh 
small thinking is not the market reality. Somebody right now is looking for you. They need your services and you just need to know how to authentically connect to people. That's what we typically do on the call. I know that there's a lot of people that can benefit from this. So for your listeners, we would love to offer this $500 audit complimentary to dive deep and to show you some of the things that you may not see, not because you're not smart, not because we're gurus, but just because we failed a lot. Mm -hmm. And just because I've been in a lot of different businesses behind the scenes and building my own. And I believe that every entrepreneur is sitting on gold and you just may not see it because you're too close. Agreed. Okay. Where do people reach you? Um, social website. Any platform that you want. I'm Polina Groman. It's very okay. simple. I don't have any, any special names. Reach out to me. If you want to speak to me personally, say that. And if you're speaking to my assistant, just say, hey, I'd love to have a conversation with Polina. I can't speak to every person. Sometimes it's just not possible. I will do my best to get back to you. If you have any specific questions, I'll do my best to give you the resources. And maybe it's not me. Maybe I'll connect you to someone in my network that can help you. Amazing. And last question I ask everybody, um, what does success mean to you at this point in your life? Happiness. Really feeling happy every day. And honestly, I'm there. I don't, I think that it's not a destination. I'm really happy right now. I'm happy with where I am personally, professionally, where I am as a human being and as a mom. And every day I pour more gasoline on that happiness by genuinely being myself. Oh,